So I wanted to talk a little bit about JetBrains Fleet. This is a new IDE from JetBrains that's coming out pretty soon. It's currently in public preview, and it's a tool that some friends and colleagues of mine have been asking me to make a video about, as well as some folks on my Discord. So I wanted to take a second and just give you my thoughts on the whole thing. Before we begin, I want to give you a quick description of my personal history with JetBrains software, and don't worry, it won't take long because I didn't use it for that long. In 2013, I was a PHP developer and the primary ID I used was something called NetBeans. And today this is considered a legacy editor, uh, kind of on the lines with Eclipse. The company I was working with at the time was also a PHP shop and they were using an editor called PHP Storm. And this was a JetBrains product. And they asked me, you know, would you like me to get you a license to use PHP Storm as well? And I said, yeah, sure. I was kind of not liking NetBeans and I wanted to do something new anyway. So I tried out PHP Storm and it actually ended up being an amazing piece of software. Obviously it had one massive downside and that's the fact that it costs money. And as a personal developer at the time, I didn't really want to pay for that and so I used NetBeans at home and PHP Storm at work. This became kind of unsustainable given the differences between the two software, so I decided to throw down some money to actually buy a subscription for PHP Storm. And I did this, they, they had some steeply discounted thing. I got it pretty cheap, so it wasn't a big deal, but I realized that I was becoming dependent on a piece of paid software. I continued using PHP Storm and then later WebStorm once I moved on to Node.js. And then after that is when Atom Editor came out. I moved to Atom Editor. I decided, you know what? The pain is gonna be kind of hard to move over, but I need to do this because I don't wanna get dependent on a, on a paid editor. So I moved to Atom, and after that, I never used another piece of JetBrains software ever again. In the end, I would consider myself to be neutral on JetBrains. I don't like them nor dislike them. I mean, on one hand, they make top tier, excellent IDEs, far superior than anything I've ever used in my career. But on the other hand, they cost money, and I don't really like that. So JetBrains Fleet, what's that all about? So normal JetBrains products, they don't really have competitors, at least in the paid editor space. In the unpaid editor space, there's a lot of competition. There's VS Code, there's Atom, and there's a variety of others. My kind of high level assessment on this is they're going after VS Code and you're gonna have to pay for it. They haven't said exactly how much that's gonna come later. And to go after VS Code, they have to make an editor that's kind of like VS Code. And this is what they've built Fleet to be. It's a lightweight IDE that doesn't have all the batteries included, bells and whistles kind of stuff that you'd get with normal JetBrains products, but it's still equally as capable and has the same autocomplete engine and whatever stuff they use for like code analysis and completion that you would expect from some of their paid IDs, or, or rather higher paid specific IDs. As far as I know, Fleet is not intended to deprecate or replace any of their existing software. This is going to be a completely new offering that they say is built from the ground up for this specific purpose. This editor, unlike the editors that they're trying to compete against, is not using Electron. It's based on the JVM, and the software is most likely written in Kotlin or Maybe Java, it's probably Colin. This does mean that Fleet is gonna perform way better because it's not built using web technologies such as Electron, which we do know is slow and it's very RAM heavy. I did try this tool out a little bit and the autocomplete is very snappy. It's about like I remember it from the normal JetBrains products. This also supposedly has collaboration. I did not get to try that out, but from the way they described and the videos and screenshots they showed, it does look pretty good. Fleet is most likely to be less of an IDE than their normal IDEs. And I'm always saying this based on their own words they're saying that they took some of the big chunks from their main software and they're including in this one. However, they did say that this is written from the ground up and obviously they did not move everything over or maybe even reuse any of it. So we can expect it to do less in that regard. And then in terms of appearance, if you're already a JetBrains user, then you can clearly tell that this software looks nothing like their current stuff. So they've changed the appearance as well. It's been around seven years since I last used JetBrains software full time. So I can't really speak to the key bindings I don't know if they're the same. I do know that the key bindings for Fleet are absolutely nothing like the ones on Atom or VS Code. And that's problematic because I found it very difficult to use because nothing I am used to worked in Fleet. This is more than I can say, of course, from going from Atom to VS Code, which I did, by the way. Side note, I moved from Atom to VS Code. I'll be putting out another video about that shortly. Now, although they make clear that Fleet is going to be a paid product, they do have a free version available. However, it does come with some limitations. There is some limited version control 
they are making it so you must either use a public repo. If you use a private one, there's a max number of committers, which is kind of weird. But the big thing is no commercial projects. It's personal projects and open source only. So if you're a business who wants to adopt JetBrains fleet and you think you're gonna give it to your employees under the free license, that's absolutely not going to work. And if you're a solo developer working from home on a paid product, you won't be able to use that either. It would very much seem to me that they're structuring the free and the paid version to make the paid version almost compulsory, except under very limited circumstances. It, it would further seem that the whole point of the free version is just to get you into the system and using the product and hopefully get dependent on it. That way they can eventually convert you to a paying customer. And then obviously the free public preview is for that exact same purpose. As far as what Fleet's gonna cost, I don't actually know. I've been trying to estimate it though. I did a little research on their current products and their paid products range in price from around $5 USD up to around $20 USD per month. Their software pricing is kind of erratic. Every different edition of their software I found kind of had a different price point. However, they do have their all products pack, which they just give you every piece of software they have. And for that, you'll pay $28.90 USD per month. And of course, if they had their choice, that's the one they'd prefer you buy. Now, as far as what I think the estimated cost is going to be for this product, it's kind of tough to say. On one hand, their product is going to have all language support, which would kind of be akin to their all products pack that's $28.90 a month. But on the other hand, Fleet is kind of a stripped down version of their main software, and you can get the cheapest software like WebStorm for like five bucks a month. They kind of can't price it too high because they are competing with software like VS Code, which if you just have a lightweight editor that supports all languages, you're pretty much describing VS Code. So for JetBrains to compete with them, they're gonna to have to add additional value. And that additional value is going to be the underlying IDE technology that JetBrains has that powers their main software. They've already said that they are including this in Fleet, and that's gonna be the main value prop that VS Code probably doesn't have. If you've ever used VS Code, you know that it can be kind of slow with suggestions, everything is not tightly integrated, and with comparison to JetBrains software, it's just not as good. All this said, if I had to give a price estimate for what I think JetBrains fleet is going to cost, I think it's going to be between five and $10 a month. For me personally, because it's a paid product, I am absolutely not going to use it. So most of what I'm saying in this video is information for everybody else who might be inclined to purchase a commercial product, and in which case you should have all the facts before you do so. That's it for the video. If you're a JetBrains product user already, or even if you're not, let me know in the comments below what you think about JetBrains fleet. Is it something you're gonna use? Do you not wanna use it? What do you think about it? And as always, if you have any questions or comments or feedback about anything you saw in this video, please be sure to leave those below in the comment as well. As always, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a fantastic rest of your day or night and take care.